If you're considering taking the SE exam and you want to know how much time you should allocate to study for the exam, test taking strategies or what exam day is like, well, make sure to stick around because today I'm interviewing Rich from Team Castava. And Rich took the exam in October, just like I did, and he's gonna go over all these little details and give a lot of great advice to future test takers. And if you want to know my perspective on how I felt about the exam and all the little details that I'd also want to give, make sure to check out Rich's channel where he interviewed me and I gave my perspective on the exam as well. I'll have the video linked up in the description below and also at the end of this video. Now, without further ado, let's get to it. All right, guys, so we have Rich here from Team Kestova. And of course, Jose didn't come to the auditorium again, right, Rich? Absolutely, um, he was late, as always. Yeah, so I guess I'll, I'll ask you the questions. Um, Perfect. The, the first one I wanted to ask is just like, I guess if you can just tell us a little bit about yourself, how, how many years of experience you have, and then what motivated you to, to take the SE exam? Yeah, so I coming up now, I have uh, I think a little over seven years experience in the civil structural engineering uh, industry. I say I always say civil structural because technically yeah. I'm not a structural engineer until I pass this freaking SE exam. Um, so yeah. you know by licensing standards, you're still just a professional civil engineer. Um, but yeah. I've, I've focused in structural design my entire career. The next question I had was just what made you decide uh, to take the SE exam? Yeah, so it was kind of just getting around the point where um, I thought that I was seasoned enough that I had kind of touched all the different, um, you know, design materials for structures, you know, concrete, steel, masonry, maybe not so much masonry, uh, wood, that mm -hmm. I thought I could... Um, I would have a good shot at preparing for the SE and uh, and passing. And it's one of those exams that you're always told by coworkers uh, who have taken it that the longer you wait or the longer, the older you get, the more responsibilities you get. So yeah. do your best to take it earlier on in your career if you feel like you're in a position to do so. And I, I felt like I was. I knew I had a lot of studying to do um, for sure, but I said, you know what? Let's dive in. Let's take it. And then the last kind of kind of straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, is uh, I heard that the exam was switching from paper based to computer based in in mm. the coming years. I think twenty twenty four, and uh, I, I didn't even want to understand what the implications were on that. I was like, I want to take this thing pen and paper. So yeah. let's do it. Yeah. And uh, how many years uh, did you say you you have um, of experience? Uh, a little over seven, I think. A little to, over, over seven, okay. Back. And um, having that much experience, how many hours do you think? I don't know if you quantified exactly um, all the hours you, you spent studying, but more or less, how many hours do you think you, you spent um, studying for this exam? And just so everyone know, Rich, you took gravity only, right? Not both gravity Correct. and lateral? Yep, I just did the single day gravity exam, eight hours, four in the morning, four in the afternoon. Um, and it's th so this is a kind of a cool thing that I did um, right in the beginning when I started studying, I actually made a video on my channel kind of outlining um, the process that I planned to take for my study efforts. And I gave mm -hmm. I broke it down into the categories I needed to study hours. I was allotting to each one of those categories and then adding it all up and saying, OK, I think I think if I study that many hours, I'll be prepared. Mm, um, yeah. And while I haven't done a follow up video yet, I can tell you all here, I went way beyond the number of hours <laughs> that I, I allocated. It was really easy to say, I'm going to study five hours of, you know, steel design, 10 hours of Ashto, five hours of wood, um, yeah. you know, 20 hours of structural analysis, general overview or whatever. And it just, everything yeah. just bled out not in a bad way uh, just in a way of once your your head was down and you were studying you realized how much more there was to learn and you just kept yeah. going you kept going and then four hours went by you didn't even study the thing that you sat down to study yeah. that day 
So yeah, it's been and, a while. and I watched that video um, actually. And I know, I think in the comments, some people who had taken the SE before said, bro, you're going to end up studying a lot more <laughs> than what you're describing. Uh, how did you feel? Like, did those comments uh, influence just how many hours you wanted to study more? Um, or or how, how did that go? Um, I, I saw those exact ones. And uh, yeah. you would think, uh, you know, we don't know yet if we, if we passed or not. Yeah. Um, but just taking the exam, I think prior to taking the exam, you would think seeing those comments, you'd get a feeling of like dread a little bit or like, yeah. oh man, like what did I get myself into? But yeah. it, uh, they weren't, you realize after you go through the process, they weren't leaving those comments to, to give you that feeling. They were sending you that message, the message to say, yeah. there's a lot, like you're going to, you're going to see so many things. Yeah. Um, and unravel so many more things and just the hours are going to fly by and yeah. it, it was very true so i i think i allotted like 120 or 140 hours for my studies mm -hmm. for just the gravity portion and yeah. i mean i i think i i clipped over 200 and and i ran yeah. out of time actually uh, the test you know the test came and was like i had to skimp on a couple of areas that i thought i knew well but i just I would have loved to brush up on and I, I didn't have the time to. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'd say 200 plus for sure. Yeah. Sa same here. Um, and knowing all of this, you know, study prep, um, that you did, is there anything that you'd have done differently looking back? Um, I would have, I would have started earlier. This mm -hmm. is a this is a me thing and the way that I take tests. Yeah. Um, I I was always a really poor test taker all the way up through college, through engineering school. You know, I was the one I was getting seventies, low eighties. Mm -hmm. um, studying a lot, I wasn't just going in and being like, oh, whatever. Um, yeah. I I always throughout my whole life had to study a ton and. I had that test anxiety and I had that, you know, yeah. the nervous jitters and I sometimes maybe I've overpacked my brain too much and then I, I show up and then it's just, you know, you, you just blank. Um, I had a yeah. lot of those problems throughout my whole life and it wasn't until, weirdly enough, wasn't until I became or I got into the professional field when the, the things that you learn and that you mm -hmm. retain go along with you know kind of go along with your salary and the yeah the, your worth and you i realized that hey i'm not i'm not doing this anymore to get a grade or to i don't know make people think that i'm i'm smart or i know what i'm doing i'm doing this for mm -hmm. myself for my career yeah. because i think it's fun and because it you know at the end of the day it does make you money and it provides for your family so yeah like it just kind of realigned all of my goals and didn't put all of those fears to the side and was like, Hey, the more, you know, the better it is for you. Like you, yeah. you alone, it only benefits you. So if you want to know more, like go for it, like, let's do this. And, um, kind of just looking back, um, I would have allotted more time for my studies. I, I think yeah. I signed up, um, mid to late summer because I caught wind that it was changing in the future to, mm -hmm. to computer based. So I was like, let's do it. Let's do it now. Even though I would have given, I would have signed up so much earlier if I had like really been preparing. Yeah. Um, so that's my only takeaway is that that's what I would do differently. I'd give so myself you, that more time. You started when late July, you would say? Yeah. I think right around there. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think, you touched on a point that is great that I, I'd like to highlight. Um, just the fact that, you know, people see us making content, see you making content out there in structural engineering, and then they, they may, you know, be afraid even to take the exam because they're like, oh, wow, this guy, you know, is going public here and he knows so much, is making a lot of videos, but we are all humans, you know, we are, we all have our own fears and, and anxieties and, it's not because, you know, we're out here in public, you know, making content that we also don't struggle um, <laughs> to actually study and, you know, to take all these, you know, hard exams 
on the contrary, we actually uh, want to make sure that that is also public for for you guys to to know that we we are not superheroes. You know, um, Rich is not a superhero. Like we all have our own struggles. So like, and you will too. But that's not you know something to discourage you um, to take the exam or to achieve your goals. You know, if this exam is one of them. Yeah. So I, I'm glad you you brought that up. Yeah. I I was told. I forget if I was told or if I if I saw this one time the. Um, it's kind of off the rails a little bit, but it does it does pertain to kind of the mindset of what we do mm -hmm. um, when we as humans, you know, try to tackle um, really difficult things. Uh, and they were they were talking about the mindset of like a real like the highest level professional athlete kind of thing or Olympians yeah. or that kind of stuff, like a big grand stage that you, they've put all this time and energy into for this one shot and kind of regular people or the interviewers always go up and say the same thing. They would say, Oh, weren't you nervous? You know, how did you, yeah. how did you pull it off? I can't believe it. Like I would have been so nervous and they, they always say, no, I was, you know, I was excited. I was, I wanted yeah. to show off my hard work because I knew that I prepared and yeah. I knew that I could do it. And a, a researcher kind of broke down a very simplistic comparison of saying, hey, just look at it this way. What are kind of the the human traits of when you're scared or nervous? You know, your uh, your breathing kind of heightens a little bit. Your, your palms maybe get a little sweaty. You know, you get mm -hmm. some chills. Um, you're fidgety. And then and then they went, now tell me the characteristics of when you're excited to go do something. Uh, and, and then they, they go on to say, your palms are a little sweaty. You got some <laughs> goosebumps. You're fidgety. Um, you know, your breathing yeah. is increased. It's the same exact feelings for two completely different um, states of mind. And as yeah. long as you can work on kind of flipping the switch and tricking yourself into saying, hey, my body's experiencing the same things as it would if I was excited. So maybe I am excited to go do this. You know, I'm not yeah. scared to go do it. I'm actually excited. And as yeah. you, it's not something you can learn overnight, but as you train yourself slowly to do that, it is, I've tried to do that and it has helped me throughout my, not just for SE studying, but for how I develop my career as well. That's awesome. And that also touches on just exam day experience. Um, how, how was it for, for you? And that's not, we're of course not going to get into details of questions um, because that's not allowed by um, NCES, the exam uh, authorities. Um, but how, how was it for you? Like, did you have to travel? Did you allocate enough time? Um, were you actually, you know, sweating your hands during the exam and or feeling confident? Um, can you exp expand a little bit on that? Yeah, so I had to, so I'm over here in, in Oregon um, in the U.S. So, uh Homolu is over there in Florida, living up the life, sunshine, <laughs> palm trees, white sandy beaches. Come to Florida. <laughs> and we're in, uh, you know, we're over here in gray, gray skies, rainy, um, but we got some big mountains and some some cool trees and stuff. Um, but I unfortunately had to travel uh, out of state to take it uh, closer to oh. Seattle. Um, it was actually a collective of three states, I believe. I think Oregon, Washington, and Idaho all oh, had wow. to travel to one test site this year. There was only, there was a handful of people that took this thing. Um, but so I had to drive about two and a half hours. Thankfully, there was a hotel right next to the testing site. I'm hoping that they do that on purpose and they think about you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, so I grabbed a room the night before. You know, I, I'm big with, um, with kind of the foods that help with my mental focus. So I kind of, brought my own food with me that that helped me stay that I think helped me stay focused you know I'm not eating a big like cheeseburger or something you know or yeah uh, something that's going to make me tired and uh, then headed over just down the street to the exam and it was dark and it was rainy but all of a sudden this group of cars showed up all to the same spot and they all pulled out their their suitcases and their their tubs of uh <laughs> you know, all of the codes. Mine's actually 500 books <laughs> right next to me. Um, exactly. And, you know, we all knew why we were there, but everyone was actually in, in really good spirits. Uh, 
he kind of chit chatted outside prior to the gates opening up. And then uh, I was, I was, it was definitely the biggest test of, to the point I talked yeah. about before of reminding myself like, Hey, keep breathing. You know, like you can catch yourself standing there and being like, Oh, I haven't breathed in like two minutes. It's like, <laughs> yeah. keep breathing. You're alive. Stretch out a little bit, you know, move your legs. You're good. Yeah. Think about all the things that you've, you know, you've studied and that you've done that, you know, and that you're confident about. Um, I had a couple of friends there, thankfully. So that was also nice. So we chit chatted as well. Nice. And, nice. uh, yeah, had a had a good time overall. Okay, were you on the younger side? You said that not many people, even though you guys were from three different states, um, were you on the younger side of the crowd, or was it a pretty wide range? Yeah, I I would say I was on the the younger range. So I'm 30 now. Um, my my buddies are also, I, I believe, same age as me. Um, but the, it could range, I think there might've been a few people younger than me there. Um, but almost everyone was, was older, um, okay. uh, maybe by only a couple of years. And then it, it went up to maybe, um, a handful of people in their, their mid, mid forties, potentially late forties. So it was, it was a good range, but I was on the younger side. Okay, cool. Um, and then for those who don't know, the exam is divided into, at, at least right now, into an AM portion or in the morning breath or a 40 uh, multiple choice questions that you have four hours to answer. And then the PM in the afternoon, um, there are only four questions and those are more in-depth um, questions. So Rich, how do you think you did um, in the morning versus afternoon? The morning I felt I felt strong on, um, there were, I, I was just falling behind a little bit with my time management as I moved through the questions. Mm -hmm. Um, so I got to the end and I want to say maybe there was three, four, five where I was able to, you know, cross out a couple of, of the possible answers and break it down into a, an A, B, you know, this or that kind of kind of answer. But I did fall a little short with my time management on that front. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I, I thought the, the questions were manageable. I thought I knew where to go and find the information to, to get the solutions um, for just about all of them. Mm -hmm. um, the afternoon, I unfortunately, this is where I think I made my mistakes. Um, mm -hmm. I started off really strong, uh, with my, my first question, but realized that I again was behind on time a bit. So that started eating into my other questions. Yeah. Uh, got a little turned around, I guess, overall, it's kind of the, the most I'll give and it cost me more time. And then mm -hmm. I had to kind of make the ultimatum of like, well, do I go back and do I make corrections and take that time? but then kill more of my time towards my other problems that I haven't done yet. So I, I kind of got, got caught in that, in that loop and was really, really pressed for time at the end. I was flying by the seat of my pants. Just, I mean, yeah. I was showing the power of street smarts in, in yeah. one of those problems and, uh, um, you know, did my best and, and did what I could. Um, but the time management is no joke with this test for sure. Yeah, definitely. It is a, it is a marathon, you know, studying for it. Um, but it's also way more than just knowing the content. You a, you actually have to know it and be fast and be quick in in answering um, everything. So I'm glad you you also mentioned about just outlining um, items because it's not fully known exactly how. Um, the exam is graded right now. I mean, real people grade the afternoon because it's it's an essay um, type of problem or the, the problems mm -hmm. are essay um, questions. And from from what I know, and you guys can correct me in the comments or Rich, um, but usually the grades are either A for acceptable, IR for improvement required, or U for unacceptable. 
And it seems like if you get any question that is unacceptable in the afternoon, so you aced, you know, three of the questions and then the last one, you just left it completely blank because you didn't have time. Then that, of course, that would be unacceptable. And then you'd fail the entire exam. A way to get around to, uh, around that is if you're running out of time, the last, you know, 10, 15 minutes, just outline um, what you know about the question and say, I ran out of time and write down the steps that you would take without punching any numbers. And I think, Rich, that's what you're saying. Um, you, you did to an extent, um, right? Um, and I had to do that as well because uh, as I we discussed before, I also um, ran out of time in the afternoon. So this is also great advice for people who are planning to take the test that even if you struggle with time, um, especially in the afternoon, there is, there is still hope because <laughs> you can still get um, some scores and some free um, points because the grader will know that you know your stuff, you just didn't get, you know, enough, you didn't have enough time um, to finish it. Um, yeah, there's definitely a, a dance to it. Um, yeah, <laughs> fast <laughs> paced, cool. fa very fast paced. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's a, um, it's a marathon of studying and it's a sprint of test taking. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good good analogy. Um, so, Rich, what advice would you have? I know we already touched on several um, different advices um, here, but which ones would you have for future test takers? Um, you know, something that helped me a lot, um, make sure you look at the, the NCES kind of outline of the number of questions that they're going to allot to each section. Um, and uh, pay, pay attention to if you're a building engineer taking the, you know, the building exam. Uh, they don't just kind of skimp over Ashto. They, yeah. they hit you with a decent amount of Ashto questions, and it, it does mimic that in practice exams and stuff. So don't just think like, then eh, there's not going to be that many because I'm doing buildings. Uh, do yeah. your due diligence with Ashto. I know that, you know, you might be going, oh, man, crap. Uh, I never design bridges. But um, at the end of the day with, with Ashto, I will say that it's still just stresses and forces and strain and all the same building materials. It's just slight changes to the rules that what you're allowed to do and some equations yeah. and stuff. So don't think it's some completely foreign thing. It's they, they make it similar yeah. um, with with what you know already for building design. Um, maybe one more, one other piece of advice is make sure you know. Actually, yeah, make sure you know the basics. Um, I may have gotten tripped up a little bit in my studies thinking like, oh, I need to know this, uh, this kind of maybe a little more obscure design question or, you know, problem because they're yeah. going to try to trip me up. And I, I think they did a very good job of being realistic of saying, Hey, we understand we only give you this much time. It, yeah. You're going to be stressed. So show us that you you know, can do a design of something that you see commonly. They're not yeah. trying to trick you. Yeah, they're not going to ask you to design the Empire State Building, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah there's not going to be some blimp that's made out of aluminum and, and carbon fire. You know, it's yeah. obviously I'm, I'm joking around, but um, yeah, you, you need to study a lot, but don't don't spend crazy amounts of times on the out on the outliers. Make sure you're solid with the core stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's really good you mentioned also the the bridge stuff because yeah we I'm also a building engineer we we don't want to study bridges um, for the most part because it's not something that we do uh, on a daily basis it looked very foreign um, at least to me when I was studying but in the morning out of the forty questions I think we have I don't know around eight or ten questions um, it's definitely a lot that if you don't study bridges at all. And going to the exam, you have to be perfect on everything else in the morning to still have a, an okay score. Um, so I I agree one hundred percent with that comment. And it's not like just like you said, the questions are not 
are not terribly hard. And a lot of the questions could be just looking things up in the Ashto code and, you know, being familiar with the code. At the end of the day, as Rich said, it's just, it, it is structural engineering. It's all structural engineering, maybe worded differently, maybe organized a little bit differently. So it just takes a little bit to, you know, to get used to how, how things are laid out. Yeah. Um, so Rich, now that we went through the marathon, and then we went through the sprint, um, and the test is over, and we have to wait maybe until December um, for us to get the results. How are you? What are you doing on your free time um, besides, you know, all the all the studying? Um, I, so my audience, I think uh, we did a lot of studying together, um, yeah. but I neglected kind of practice problems and providing more practice for those taking the PE, um, and more. So I, I lacked on the content side of things and I would, mm -hmm. uh, I'm enjoying getting back into the process of, of providing more of that. So yeah. spending a little bit more time on that front, which is studying in its own right, but it's, it's still very different. I, I really yeah. enjoy making content. So I'm going to be diving more into that. Um, so everyone out there, keep your eyes peeled. Uh, I enjoy, um, some gaming i actually uh gamed a lot as a kid and then once i went off to college and everything i i you know kind of put it all away and mm -hmm. really the pandemic was the thing that kind of brought that back when we were all in our houses kind of sitting there and and, and fearing for the world um so i i've enjoyed getting back into some gaming so i'm doing a little bit of that again which is really fun um, nice and then, yeah, just spending time with uh, with my girlfriend and our animals. Uh, we got a dog and a cat, so uh, we've been going on some hikes, uh, seeing some friends, bike rides. You know, it's it's now the rainy season here in Oregon, so we're winding down some of that outdoor activity. But it's starting to get cold, so hopefully, we'll be doing some some snowboarding here soon. Cool. And cool. I'll be getting yeah. a haircut. I don't know if anyone can see this flow right now, but. It's in shambles. I, I put everything on the side to study, <laughs> and a haircut was one of them. So yeah, I'm excited for that. Yeah, definitely, it's good for us to to enjoy all this free time now um, until we get our results and also prepare for the next marathon. You know, lateral um, at least. You know that one for sure. Mm -hmm. We have in our in our future. So um, well, Rich, it was really good having you. Having you over here on Quick Question Engineering, um, it's really, uh, a, I really appreciate, you know, just having more insight and about structural engineering and content creation as well um, regarding the SE exam, because I feel like there is so much out there for the FE, there's some for the PE, and then you get to the SE and there's, there's nothing, <laughs> you know, out there. So we really need more people um, to be together and growing uh, this um, structural engineering community. So if you haven't you know, checked out Team Kestava, he's, he's there with Jose uh, whenever Jose uh, shows up. Um, so make sure to to check out his channel. Yeah, Homaloo with uh, QQE, thanks for having me. Thanks for reaching out. I think we had a, a great conversation and uh, we're definitely gonna have many more. So thanks for having me. All right, thanks, Rich. Thank you guys. And we'll see you all next time. See ya, peace.